All right, guys, we're about to get right into it. So we got Muhammad Hijab doing a post-debate breakdown for an individual who we can't name on YouTube. A shout-out to him. You guys know who he is. Giving a post-debate breakdown of his horrible performance with Alan Dershowitz, right? He went on a one-hour clip farming spree, guys. Is that what it's called, clip farming? He tried to get as many X clips and TikTok clips to go viral instead of debate, instead of intellectually destroying the guy in a professional manner, right? He could have done it in a professional, he could have professionally destroyed Alan Dershowitz's talking points easily, right? But he chose to go on a one-hour clip farming spree, and he's thinking he got a W with this debate. And it's like, and then he makes a bunch of contradictions too within debate. He says, first he says, oh, um, I'm pro-Palestinian, I support the Palestinian cause, but I'm anti-axis of resistance, you know, and he says, because my viewpoints are antithetical to theirs, and everybody's kind of looking at him like, wait, wait, what? How does that even make any sense? Um, let's play his little response here, man. Let's play his little response Genocide here. Genocide support or someone like Piers Morgan or an apologist really for Palestine genocide he tries to pretend or feign that he's on the fence but after a year like i mean fifty thousand people effectively died in more than one country israel acting in the same way in palestine acting in the same way in uh, gaza acting in the same way in lebanon i was not gonna be questioned by this guy and i don't mind if anyone comes and says well you're very arrogant the way you've dealt with this very distasteful uh, very unbecoming I say, you know what, it doesn't matter what you think, because with respect, I would rather look arrogant and um, and be dominating with an enemy or with an individual who's an apologist for the genocide than look uh, professional but weak at the same time. So it's a trade-off I was happy to have. And I think this is the only way to deal with people like this. And um, I think it was, from my perspective, it, uh, it fulfilled the strategic function of showing the hypocrisy of Piers Morgan, because when he was questioned with the same words and the same interrogations that he uses to question other people about Israel, does Israel have a right to defend itself? You know, does is what's the proportionate response? Literally, his exact words were used against him, and you saw him contradict himself in a span of a minute. Does does Iran have a um, right to defend itself? Yes, no, no, yes. Literally, going from one answer. To another answer in the span of 20 or 30 seconds not knowing how to respond to that question you know getting a taste of his own medicine you know he's been doing it like i, I will never forget the interview that he conducted with jeremy corbyn right Je jeremy if you saw that interview bro he, he was basically trying to ravage jeremy corbyn with like 15 or 16 or 20 times asking the same thing you condemn this or do you or does israel have a right to defend itself okay well have a taste of your own medicine, Piers Morgan, because it's not just you that can try and act the bully. If you can try and dish it out, and you want to dish it out to people like Jeremy Corbyn and this one and that one, the other one, Abdul Wahid, who the, the GP who lost his job subsequently because of that interview, um, and other people as well who he's been trying to bully. If you if you act like that, you know, you're not about that life really, because there's always going to be someone who can do that to you in a better way than that you can do it to other people. And that person's Muhammad Hijab. And when he came and he did it to you in Dershowitz, I mean, you really didn't have a response. I mean, the physiognomy of Piers Morgan said it all. His facial expressions, his um, physiological reactions. He was a defeated man. And that's all I wanted to do. And uh, yeah, some people say it's distasteful, but to be honest with you, I don't care what I have to say about that. Yeah, you know, and Hijab made Dershowitz look terrible when it came down to... Uh... The concept of Iran being able to respond to the attack on its embassy, which is a no-brainer there. Uh, you you attacked an embassy of a, of a sovereign country um, that had political uh, figureheads that were involved who got killed. And then the, the whole concept of a proportional response. Oh, can we can we go in if we want to target one individual, we can bunker buster a... a an entire stadium of women and children just to target one individual. Uh, Dershowitz can't rationalize that. No one can rationalize that, right? So, you know, I'm going to give him his credit there. 
Uh, but the ad, the ad hominems and the whole clip farming stuff for the whole hour, that was just annoying. It was, it was unnecessary. Um, and his whole stance on the situation, well, yeah, I'm pro-Palestinian, but I'm, I'm anti-axis of resistance because their viewpoints are antithetical to mine. Really? So what is, what do you align with? What viewpoints do you align with then, sir? That of the government of Egypt? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, then, you know, you go on this tweet, man. He's over here tweeting about... Um, look at this Look at this specific tweet. This is why... This is why... Uh, and, and this guy c tries to cause this, like, sectarianism. Him and, and some of these other guys in, the, um, in his circle, they'll try to cause, like, a... a strife between the whole Sunni Shia stuff, which is, which is, I'm going to be honest with you guys, is, um, a strategy that some of the people who he claims he's against have used and continuously used to, to till today in places like Yemen, Syria, um, to divide Muslims, right? So he'll, he'll make comments like this. How low have we set the bar when the imponents and weakness of all Sunni Muslim states have left us so desperate? That a mere fireworks display by a Shia state can spark a false sense of joy. So this is after the uh, Iranian attack on, on Israel with 180 ballistic missiles. And he has several tweets causing like sectarianism. I um, hope I'm saying I'm saying the word right between Sunnis and Shias. Right. And he blames it on the, the whole conflict in Syria. Which anyone with half a brain knows that um, a lot of the people that were involved in that um i guess you could call it like a revolution or whatever a lot of actors that were involved in taking over the syrian government were being funded aided and equipped by the same people who he is speaking against right so you see the contradictions here so, um, anyways, yeah, that's just my two cents, man. All you uh, hijab fanboys are probably going to be in the comment section mad. I, I don't care, man. Like, I'm not, I'm not standing for this sectarianism and dudes trying to uh, divide, divide and conquer. You know, play the same same strategy and in, in the same divide and conquer mentality that the people who he, who he apparently speaks out against uh, try to do. So we're not having that. Um, and there's several, you can just go on his, his X page, you can see several anti-Shia, <clears throat> you can see several, uh, uh, posts that, 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 that are, um, stuff he's saying that could cause division, man. Just keep it real, because this guy has a huge platform and he has a lot of influence. This could cause division in a time where Muslims are supposed to unite, right?